welcome back to my channel cord cutting and sports in this video I'm going to show you how you can download or save uh, rec recordings of ESPN uh, events including replays of anything that has aired on ESPN uh, any of its any of the cable channels uh, ESPN 3 and ESPN plus uh, first of all a big shout out uh, to someone I guess one of my watchers, subscribers, um, who contacted me and basically uh, let me know about this method and helped uh, basically walk me through it to get it working um, and providing me uh, one of the files that's required in order to execute this. Alright, so this video is going to have two parts. The first part I'm going to go through and I'm going to basically download all of the various programs and files needed in order to actually download or save an ESPN uh, event. The second part is going to be uh, the actual process of downloading the ESPN event and just to show you and confirm that it works. Now, if you already know uh, the first part, if you already have all these files downloaded um, and, and so on, or if you've been researching this on your own, then you can just skip uh, to part two. You know, you can just jump ahead. There'll be timestamps in the video. Also, uh, there'll be a PDF file which has all these instructions, basic instructions and text with all the specific links where you need to go um, in the description of the video and also in the pinned comment. And I'll also link to the uh, websites that I'm going to right now in order to download all of these um, video, uh, files. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So. I'll probably in, in post production try to put like a uh, little graphic on the screen that shows the various things that I'm going to download. So the first one is the program n underscore m3u8dl-re. So I've done some videos on this. This is a newer, um, basically web stream uh, downloading program. And so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the uh, basically the website here, download the latest version, which is 3.0 uh, beta. So I scroll down here, since I'm on a Windows machine, I'm going to download, you know, the Windows 64-bit version right here. And I'm going to save everything to a brand new directory, even though I already, you know, have this, all these programs installed and set up and working. I'm just going to pretend as if, you know, this is a brand new, um, a brand new installation, brand new setup, like I'm doing it for the first time. All right, so I'm going to save this. I got a test directory. I'm just going to, you know, save everything to. All right, and I'm going to download everything uh, first, and then we'll go through and unzip everything later. So that is um, that is n underscore m3u8dl-re. Okay, next is ffmpeg. You need this. Uh, you need these uh, files, and you need them to be in the same directory as um, the n underscore m3u8dl-re. So now I'm on this website. I'm going to download it from... I just need the essentials. I don't need the full. If you want to get the full, that's fine. Um, and a lot of these files are going to be downloading your zip files, so you do need something to unzip them, whether it's WinZip or um, WinRAR or, you know, whatever. Okay, so let's go ahead and save these essentials. Okay, so that part's done. Next, I'm going to download a plugin. Uh, for Firefox or Chrome, I am going to show how to use it. I don't install it in Firefox um, because Firefox is the program, uh, the browser that I'm going to use to download a test video. All right, you want the XPI file right here. So I am just going to download and save this. <coughs> this is again called Widevine uh, Proxy 2. This is the plugin that will go into Firefox or Chrome, which will get the keys that you need in order to download the decrypted streams. All right, next. Um, this website, okay, basically has the instructions. So we'll get to this when I actually install it, but just this is a link that's included in the, um, you know, the PDF file. All right, next thing. You need this .wvd, it's also called a CDM file, to load into Widevine Proxy 2 once we have the plugin installed. So I'm going to download this file, which is just shared via Google Drive. And lastly, you need a program called, I don't know, I don't know what it's pronounced.
pronounced Shaka um, Packager, Shaka Packager, assume it's Shaka Packager. Um, and make sure you expand this because originally it only shows so many files and the Windows one is missing. Um, but this is the one if you're on a Windows machine like I am, this is the file you want to download. Okay, so now all the files are downloaded. I'm going to go to the directory where everything is and just basically start extracting everything. Okay, so I have this uh, right here. I'm just going to extract the files to this main directory. I mean, really, it's just, you know, an exe file. All right, next, uh, let's do FFmpeg. So again, same thing, WinRAR, I'm going to extract the files here. Okay, here's the thing, though, that is kind of annoying. So you want these three files here. These need to be in the same directory as um, the n underscore m3u8dl-re. So I'm going to just cut these and then paste them out here. Otherwise, it tries to look for them when it's um, in the process of running, and uh, it can't find them and returns an error. OK, next. Now is where we're going to install this XPI file in Firefox. Now, I, again, I've already done this, so I'm going to pretend like I'm selling it um, for the first time. Here, is the, uh, here are the instructions from the website. You know, basically the same GitHub site that I downloaded the XPI file from. So we already downloaded the file. Okay, in Firefox, which I have right here, um, what we're going to do is just go to About colon Add-ons, and if you were in Chrome, you would just go to Chrome, you know, and type in that colon forward slash forward slash extensions, another forward slash you know, enable developer mode, and then you would you can drag and drop the file in. But for Firefox, we're going to go to About Add-ons. Okay, and now what you would do is you would click uh, this icon right here, Settings, and you go to Install Add-on from File. Okay, now I navigate to the directory where the file is. Just select the file, and then it was yes, like allow to run in private windows. Sure, even though I'm going to not download in a private window. Um, just click Add. All right, and that'll tell you it's added, and so on. Okay, even though it was already there, and you can see the little, uh, you know, you see a little thing up here that the extension's been added. All right, so that part's now done. So let's now jump back to uh, what else we need to do. We need to load this in, and uh, what we also need to do is this Shaka Packager file needs to be renamed. So that it is shaka-packager.exe. Okay. Again, it has to have that name. If it does not have that specific name, then when the uh, m3 wait command starts to run, that's automatically generated. Um, it won't find it and basically won't be able to decrypt the encrypted file. This way, you don't have to generate. This way, you don't have to change uh, the automatically generated. Um, you know, command that you're just going to copy and paste from Widevine Proxy 2. Okay, so that part's done. All right, so now the last part, again, before we're ready to go, is in Firefox, let's just get rid of this. Okay, so you would click on this here. So this thing is already loaded. So what I'm going to do, so just, just remove that. So this is what you would see when you open this for the first time, okay? And then you would go choose file and then browse. And then you would select the file here and you would click open. And now it should display this, you know, L3, Motorola, Moto G, Image, blah, 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 whatever. Okay? So now everything is loaded, everything uh, is basically good to go. And now in the second part of the video, uh, I'm going to show you how we can actually download um, a file of a game, or you know, save a recording of a game uh, from ESPN. Okay, 
So now let's get into part two, where we actually get into downloading a replay of an event from ESPN's website. All right, so got the main website up. It's basically watchespn.com, which redirects to e www.espn.com slash watch. Um, I also have the folder open where I downloaded and unzipped everything, so all the various programs and plugins and so on. Okay, so I'm going to go to Schedules and Replays. Once that loads, I actually decided I am going to, uh, as a task, download the uh, Clemson LSU game from Saturday night. All right, so we'll go to Replay. We'll go to Saturday. We'll go to Football just to help narrow it down a little bit. And the replay for this, this is an ABC event, so the replay is going to be here under ESPN3. All right, so a um, couple things. Click on the event. Wait for it to load. Okay, the first thing that's going to happen, that's going to play, is basically going to be an ad. You have to wait till this is done in order to get the keys, or specifically the command line, that you're going to execute. All right, so now that that's done, now this is when the main event would start. Now the main event here is not playing. Don't worry about that. That's irrelevant. So we go down here. We click on the Widevine uh, Proxy 2 plugin, right? Again, I have the uh, the CDM thing already uh, loaded here. Did that, you know, part one of the video. Okay, now I click to expand this, and then you have to scroll down here to where it says CMD. This is the part you want to copy, and you're just going to copy it and then paste it in the terminal window, and it's going to run. So to select the whole thing, you can like you can just double click, or you can click in it once, and then you can do Control A to select all, and then Control C to copy it, or you can also right click and choose copy. Okay. Either way, once you have that command line copied, now what I'm going to go uh, do, and this is actually a new shortcut too that I just realized, which is so much quicker. I'm in the directory where n underscore m3u8dlre is located, right? You right click and you go to open in terminal. That will open the command prompt when on my other monitor initially. And it automatically does it in the directory that we want. So this is actually a much quicker, faster, easier way than like going to start, run, typing cmd, and then having to navigate uh, from the default directory it dumps you into over to the directory that where your programs are installed. So this is actually a new shortcut, a new trick. Just have the folder open if you're in Windows, right click, open in terminal, and then we're already right there. Okay, so now there I just right clicked. I didn't even have to do control V. I just right clicked on my mouse. Notice it pasted the whole thing. I'm going to hit enter. Okay, and we get an error. So let's see, what's going on here? Is the thing, is the, uh, the name not matching up? N underscore, the capitalization and everything appears to be correct. Um, but it's telling me it's not recognized. I wonder if for some reason, it's not rec if uh, this is not recognizing the exe part of it. So uh, give me one second. Okay, so now I went through the old fashioned way, which is go to start, go to run, type cmd, enter, and then I navigated to this directory. I had to type cd dot dot twice to get back to the c colon, main c colon, cd dot dot, and then I just did cd space test, and that got me to the directory where it's located. Let's try pasting this now, and let's see what happens. Okay, see, it runs now fine. So I don't know why the PowerShell version of Terminal that opened when I right-clicked. I guess, whatever, that doesn't work for some reason, so I guess you can't use that shortcut. So instead, you have to do it the way I've always been doing it. All right, so notice the highest quality is automatically selected by default. You can use the space to, like, toggle here or whatever, but we don't want to do that. I want the highest quality, um, so I'm just going to hit Enter. Notice here it says fail to get key. Don't worry about that. That's not going to matter. Okay, so this is going to take some time uh, to download, you know, to run and first download the data and then de uh, basically encode it and decrypt it. So obviously I'm going to cut this out of the video. I will be back 
uh, once the process is finished just to confirm that we have a nice uh, high quality file with audio and video. Just want to jump in here to say that the file has basically downloaded, you know, the, um, and it's now being decrypted uh, using Shaka Packager. And again, you have to make sure that the exe file is named shaka-packager.exe, you know, all lowercase, basically the same uh, way that it's written in the command prompt, you know, that is being generated from the plugin and that's, you know, that we're running. Because if you don't do that, it'll give you an error and it'll say that like Shaka package or whatever is not found. That was, that's what I was, something I was running into initially um, when I was testing this out. Okay, so the file uh, has just finished downloaded. So now I'm gonna go ahead and play the file just to ensure that what we re downloaded, you know, is a full thing with audio, video, and everything working out uh, properly. Maybe just mute that so I don't have it coming through my headphones the entire time. Okay, so it looks like the start of the event. And now I'm just gonna do, and you can see, pretty good quality. Notice there's about 20 minutes or so at the start of it. Notice it does appear to include the commercials, uh, which is annoying, but still uh, better than nothing, better than what we were previously getting before this, which was nothing. And we pretty much, okay, we have the whole event. You see quality of it's fantastic. It's got the audio, trust me, heard it coming through loud and clear. And it's got the video. Um, there's probably, you can probably um, in some way uh, add to the command prompt if you want to, to re, you know, uh, rename the file, give it a specific name as compared to, you know, just a generic CTR all HDRI complete trimmed, you know, basically it's just taking the name of the, uh, you know, the M3 U8 URL and it's just renaming the file using that, you know, generating the file name from that. But in any case, uh, this is just an example of how uh, we are now able to download, save, record replays of ESPN events. This works. I've tried it on regular ESPN. I've tried it on ESPN Plus. Right now in this video, you just saw it happen on ESPN uh, 3. So, um, again, all the links, descriptions, instructions, and everything will be in the description of the video and also in a pinned comment. So, uh, let me know any questions or comments or concerns, issues that you're running into. Um, leave a comment, you know, on the video below.